about that movie. Good morning, Vietnam. Good morning, Wakanda Nation. Listen, excited to be here. I'm Dr. Ross. For those of you that don't know, VP of Communications here at Wakanda. Excited to be in your presence this morning as we stand on the shoulders of those, uh, our, our leaders, our, our CEO, our CSO, all of the corporate team. And um, I'm, I'm really standing in the stead of our CSO, Phyllis Nash, as she is moving forward in the celebration of life for her sister. And today I wanna to share with you something that I believe that will help every one of us in our life as well as in our business. Because oftentimes when we make up our mind to do something, whether it's just to reach a certain goal, whether it's to get married, whether it's to start a business, whether it's to rank in the company, whether it's to move forward through, with March Madness, no matter what it is, even if it's just in your own daily activities, there is an enemy that tries to hinder us. And that enemy is an enemy of focus because you can't do anything you don't focus on. When people get in the game uh, to, let's say, run track and field, they focus on the finish line. But when they're running hurdles, they've also got to focus on each hurdle to jump over it to get to the finish line. Because as we know, in life, it's a journey. And it's a, it's, it's, we want to get to a destination, but we must recognize that it's a journey. And too often, even in this, this, this era of network marketing, this field of network marketing and direct selling, so many times we focus on the end that we don't focus on the journey of getting there. And the journey of getting there is full of ups and it's full of downs. It's full of right turns and left turns. If you get in your car today to drive somewhere, you're going to encounter a lot of things. But you're going somewhere. You're going to encounter traffic. I'm in Houston, Texas. We have so much traffic traffic all the time. It used to be traffic in the morning and traffic at five o'clock. That's when you expected traffic. But now you can get on a freeway any time of day and experience traffic. And it's not, it's not even an accident or it's not even somebody put on the side of the road. It's just traffic. It's a bunch of folk. And some of you live in cities and towns just like that. So I want to touch on the enemies of focus. Because if we're going to succeed, in everything that we attempt to do, everything that we're setting out to do, we've got to stay focused. So one of the first enemies of focus is distraction. How many of you know that the moment you say you're going to do something, distraction comes? And a lot of times it comes within your own family. You know, the folk you can't say no to, the folk who always or interrupting what you're trying to do. You could say, I'm going to pray every morning at a certain time, and guess what? Your phone would ring. <laughs> See, at some point, you have to make up your mind, I'm not going to be distracted. Now, we know there are emergencies about everything, and I'm not talking about emergencies, but you've got to set it in your mind that I'm not, if, is, is this thing distracting me from getting where I'm going, or is it helping me? I've learned that I don't even want to be in a conversation that is not helping me or empowering me or either I'm empowering somebody else. See, you got to either be giving to somebody or getting something from them in a positive way. And so sometimes things are just trying to distract us from our goals, distract us from our vision. So we've got to avoid those distractions. Put them on, put them on the side. I'll get back with you later. I had something that happened uh, just, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and they were saying, uh, can you do this? And what I said to them after this weekend, why did I say that? Because most of you know, we're having a meeting in Houston, Texas this weekend. So what, what this conversation was about had no relationship to what I'm needing to do this weekend. No, it wasn't an emergency. It wasn't something that couldn't be put on hold. But it was something that I could say to them, I will talk to you about this on Monday after I get past this weekend. Now, what if I started doing and dealing with that right now? 
is distracting me from something that I need to do to get prepared or to move forward. But too often, because we don't know how to say no, or we don't know how to say, okay, I'll get back with you. And when I say get back with you, I mean, get back with them. Don't say I'm gonna get back with you and then you never pick up the phone or you never handle that situation. Because some of us are guilty of that. We will say, I'll get back with you and we never get back with the person. So when you have to put that thing aside so that you can focus on where you're going. The other thing that is a, an enemy of distraction or an enemy of focus, excuse me, an enemy of focus is boredom. I'm going to say this because I am a person that I cannot be bored. Okay. One of the things that I did during the cleanse, and I would tell people when I talk to them about the cleanse, listen, yes, you're going to go 21 days all raw, but I'm not eating the same salad all 21 days because I can't be bored. I'm, that's why we've got people like Willie Mooney and other folk who have just become professional and coming up with recipes. I love it, love it, love it. I love it when people post their recipes, their different salad recipes, their different plant-based recipes when you're coming off the cleanse, but all these different varieties. I mean, I even Google all these different ways to do salads. To, sometimes it's just adding carrots or adding cucumbers or adding something to make it look different that causes you not to be bored. And many of you are like that. You, you get bored of something, and once you're bored, you're off to something else. So you don't stay focused. You don't stay true to that particular thing because you easily get bored. So you do things to be creative to cause you not to become so bored that it causes you to lose your focus. The third enemy of focus is not having enough data about who you are. So you got to know yourself. You got to know what makes you tick, what gets your juices flowing, what gets you, see, what gets my juices flowing is doing what I'm doing right now. I love to teach. Teaching is my passion. Teaching is my gift. And I love to do it. I love to empower people amongst anything else that I do. Y'all know I love music. Y'all know I love sports. But more, more than anything else, I love to teach. So You've got to know who you are and what keeps you focused. Because sometimes we're busy, but we're not productive. There's a difference. That's why our CSO always tells us about doing money-making activities. Our, our, our training of development always talks about money-making activities. You hear Willie Mooney talking about money-making activities. So just because you're busy doesn't necessarily mean you are productive. So if you, you got to see where your time is going, you got to check yourself and make sure, am I being productive? Because you know you, nobody knows you better than you know you. And then the fourth thing that is an enemy of our focus is a to-do list. Ah, see, now you thought I was going to say something else, but yeah, a, a long to-do list. Let me be real more specific because it's not about having a to-do list because to-do lists are great. Fantastic. I always have a to-do list. My husband laughs at me because he knows I'm a computer person, but he always laughs because I usually have my to-do list handwritten. <laughs> I still write some things on paper, but a long to-do list can be an enemy of your focus because too often we look at a to-do list as something you have to finish, all of it. That's not the purpose of a to-do list. The point of a to-do list isn't to do all the things today, but to keep a running tab of things to be done. It's to have a checklist. It's to encourage you that you've got something done, even if it's one thing on the list. But stop getting frustrated and, and, and just, you know, messed up because you didn't, golly, I had 10 things on the list and I didn't get none of them done. I didn't get all of them done. Did you get one of them done? If you didn't get any of them done, is it because you got distracted? Is it because, and, and again, don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about an emergency that came up and now you couldn't do, do anything because what's important is what's important. You know, there are things important in life that happen to us, all of us, and then we have to focus on that. And it's okay. But guess what? Once you're done with that, now you can get back to that list. But don't get so messed up in your head 
because you didn't get all of it done. So that, that long to-do list can sometimes cause us to lose our focus. And then fifth thing is the lack of big results. Oh my goodness, so many, so many times I listen and we hear people and we all think about what we did not accomplish, what we did not conquer, where, what we did not reach. I'm gonna flip it. What did you accomplish? Okay, let's, let's give your, pat yourself on the back. You show up every morning right here. I need you to pat yourself on the back for showing up to hear something every, every morning to empower you, to get you going, because you don't know the day that it's gonna click. Maybe you haven't reached the goal yet, but you don't know that moment that something's gonna register in your spirit, in your brain, to get your juices flowing, to cause you to succeed. And we, we, we too often are in conversations about what's not happening. When you make any progress, did you hear me? Any progress, give yourself some credit. Because we don't usually realize when we're moving forward. The, you know, I've talked about the, the story of the tortoise and the hare. You learned that as a kid, right? He was moving slow, but he beat the hare. He got to the finish line. So I need you to encourage yourself. I need you to be encouraged. Just making incremental progress. We don't even realize when you're moving forward. I tell people when they show up for the, for the deep dive training, give yourself credit. You showed up on a Saturday. If you show up on a Saturday morning, we went, when Minister Mooney and I teach, give yourself credit on a Tuesday night, on a Monday night, whatever you show up for. If you show up and you have a grand opening and one person shows up, give yourself some credit for going after it. Because that one person may lead you to a thousand people. I am learning how important it is to not judge by the numbers. Because that one person leads to two and that two leads to four. Come on, do exponential math. Two to four, four to eight, eight to 16, 16 to 32. See, y'all know I can multiply. Yeah, so you got to recognize you don't know where it's taking you. And when we don't see big things happen, big what we call big things. When we don't see big things happen at work or in business or in life, it's easy to think that we're doing something wrong or that nothing is actually happening at all. And I'm going to leave you, I'm going to close you with this understanding. When a farmer plants a seed in the ground, he sees nothing happening, absolutely nothing. But is there something happening? Yes. There is scientific proof. There is demographic proof that the seed begins to do something. It's called germination. It begins to do something with the seed connecting to the ground. And it does all of this work out of sight. What am I saying? What kind of nation? If you're putting in the work, something's happening. Whether you see it or not, it will produce because eventually the farmer sees a sprout. But he would never see the sprout if he had never, ever planted the seed. So the challenge today is plant the seeds. What are the seeds? Talking about your business, showing the presentation, telling somebody about the three-way call, getting on a three-way call, making sure that you make contact with people, piquing their interests. All of that is seed planting. And focus on that seed planting because it is producing something. It's producing something in your life so that people will eventually, and I know we want it, we want everybody, everybody, we, we want it to happen overnight. We want it right now. But some seeds do that. If you ever do a study of seeds, every seed has its own germination time. And some of the smallest seeds take longer to germinate than others. And then some big seeds, I mean, you got trees in your yard at your home. It took a long time for that tree to get where it is. But look at it's it's standing the test of time. I've got a tree in our front yard. It's it stood through hurricanes. It stood through storms, all of that. But it took a long time for it to grow. So focus, focus, focus and productivity. It's a skill like anything else that you learn and you learn it from practicing. You learn it from making mistakes. You learn it from failure. You learn it from being determined. So make a list of your own weaknesses, make a list of your own strengths, 
This is, this is going to develop your focus and your productivity. And then lastly, get some help. It's okay to ask for help. If you know you're weak in an area, I tell people, oh, that, that's, my, that's not my strength. So guess what? I got somebody to help me with those areas that are not my strength. So today, let's focus, Wakana. Let's focus, Wakana Nation. Let's get busy. Let's plant some seeds everywhere. Because the scripture says, cast your bread on many waters. And you don't know which one is coming up, if it's going to be this one or that one. Because here's what I've learned. The very people I thought would do Wakana Nation, would, would do this business, were the ones who didn't. And the ones that I didn't expect to do it, those are the ones who are really involved. So you just focus on casting the bread on many waters, planting your seeds, and watch it come to pass. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Same place, same time, same station. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye for now.